Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a fault on a Samsung flat panel TV and I'm also going to explain and give a quick demonstration why actually fault finding to component level on modern televisions is more down to just good luck than technical experience. So let's take a look first, back at the mid 1990s when I was a Samsung dealer and I used to sell new TVs, Samsung used to supply me with a service manual, um, now if we turn a few pages there's quite a lot in here but more importantly every single part of the TV, every resistor, capacitor, washer, nut, screw, bolt, even the cabinet parts were all replaceable, they all had a part number but more importantly if we turn to the back of the service manual, I'll try and hold the camera at the same time. Um, there was actually circuit diagrams in it, and fault finding to component level, there was no problem at all on sets like this. Now let's take a look at a service manual for um, a modern Samsung flat screen TV. I'll just move over to the computer. Right, so this is the manual for a modern TV. Unfortunately, now everything's on the internet, you can't get any paper manuals. So let's scroll down. Um, first, there's a few sections on safety. Well, we all know about that. Um, move down a bit more, there's some things on installation and then product specification, the size of the television. Well, we already know that. Um, the weight, all things that you don't know, uh, things that you don't need to know are actually listed in the service manual. So we move down a bit further and um, there's a section on setting it up, setting up the apps. Uh, putting photographs on the TV. This is all things you don't need to know if you're repairing a telly. Uh, so we move down a bit further um, and there's quite a few pages dedicated to uh, all the different things the TV can do. Don't forget this is the workshop service manual that's supposed to help you repair the TV. So we keep going down, it tells you how to use the remote control. Keep down more more disassembly um, undo these screws here well we don't really need to know that because you can see what the screw needs to be undo to take the back off uh, move down more there's a very pretty picture of the boards inside the telly and um, we keep going down there's some troubleshooting it tells you how to get the camera working but on the next page uh, there's nothing else about troubleshooting so we move down a bit more and this is actually in the service menu now it tells you how to set things up um, so rather than keep going on, let's just keep moving down and down through all these different pages and what you might notice is there's no actual circuit diagrams and that's because you're not supposed to use a circuit diagram. What, you do, what you're supposed to do is just find the board that the fault's on and replace the whole board. Well, in a lot of tellies, a new board can be worth more. A new board can cost more than the telly's actually worth. Um, so keep moving down. We've got an exploder view of a lot of parts that um, can be ordered and some that can't. Um, now, if we look here in the parts list, these are all boards. That's what the manufacturers want you to replace. Um, if we look down a bit further in the electrical parts, there are some electrical things listed, but if you look at the side. They all say SNA, service not available, which means you can't replace them if you wanted to. But at the end of the day, how are you going to replace anything when you don't have a circuit diagram? Because you don't actually know what you're looking for. So we keep going down here and we get to the end of the manual. That's it. No circuit diagram whatsoever. Right, so I'm going to be looking at this modern flat panel Samsung TV. Now before we start, I must tell you I've already found the fault on this TV. But for demonstration purposes, for making this video, um, I've actually put the, fault back, I've put the fault back on the TV by replacing the part that was faulty. Um, now as most people know, in modern TVs the most common fault is failure of the backlights. Um, because all these LEDs are in series so if one goes out the whole lot goes out and a typical symptom with an LED failure is you'll get sound but no picture just a black screen there'll be no backlights lit so I've got this TV plugged in let's just switch it on and we'll see what the symptom is and there it's coming on 
let's get on with that. And Paloma. So Paloma, you are about to go out on tour. Um, haven't been touring for a while, obviously. But we should we should say, I mean, you are the other than a. So we'll just turn the sound down so you can hear me talking. So you can hear the sets on. It's got sound. And if we lift it up, the screen's completely black. It doesn't have no picture. Good company. Yeah. Great company. I mean, that's still amazing. Don't run that down. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with the British public at the time. <laughs> Switch it back to standby. So as you can see, this TV has got all the symptoms of a backlight failure. Now, we could test the backlights with a backlight tester, but that's not a very good test because... Um, these cheap testers, they only run at 20 to 30 milliamps, whereas when these backlights are running flat out, you need two to 300 milliamps. So if we just put a backlight test on, the backlights might light up and they might appear to be okay when they're actually faulty. But we're not going to rush in and just change these backlights because they're expensive for a tally like this and it's also a big job to fit. So I'll show you the tests I've done on this tally. Um, before I actually came to the conclusion what the problem was. Right, so we, we've established that we've got no backlights lit, but we've got sound. Now that is absolutely typical of backlight failure. Um, but the only good thing about I like about these Samsung TVs is they have a built-in backlight tester. Um, and that runs the LEDs flat out, and that will show any problem with the backlight. Um, and all we do to initiate the backlight test is we unplug this power supply lead um, that goes to the main board. Now there's nothing else, when you unplug that, there's nothing else connected to this apart from the backlights themselves. So this test, by unplugging that, will tell us um, if the, um, the symptom that the backlight failed is correct. Because if I unplug this and the screen still stays dark, the backlights have failed. Um, now, I've got the TV flat down so if we look through these holes uh, that'll tell us if the backlight's lit or not so what you do is you unplug this with great difficulty while you're holding the camera that's it and uh, now we're going to power the tv up but i'm going to set the camera so you can look through these holes Right, here we go. So straight away, you can actually see that now the backlights have lit up. I'll unplug this while I'm holding the camera at the same time. See the backlights are off. The backlights are on. So that test tells us now that the backlights aren't actually faulty. Um, Assuming that the backlights were faulty, it was a misdiagnosis. So let's try something else. Right, so that tells us that the actual power supply is working and the backlights are working. So that leaves us with three possibilities left. Either a fault on the main board, a fault on the timing control, or a fault on the LCD panel itself. So let's do the next test and let's unplug the timing control board from the main board which is simply done by taking that out and um, let's get the set powered up again and see what happens right so that's the timing control board unplugged um, let's look for the backlight again and uh, I'll power it up here Now you can see that the sound's on and the backlights are actually lit. So with the timing control board uh, removed, the backlights have come on. So that only leaves us now with two possibilities, either a fault on the timing control or a fault on the LCD panel itself. So we can unplug that. And it's off again. Right, so we plug the timing control cable back in. And the next test is over here, is to move, uh, sorry, remove these two ribbon cables connected to the timing control. So 
So that's the first one. That's the second one. Now these actually go to the uh, the gate drivers on the LCD panel. Uh, let's switch on again and see what happens. What are you making? We are making. And once again, you can see that the back lights have lit up and we've still got sound. I'll just try and unplug that at the same time. <laughs> and that's the back light off again. So that only leaves us one possibility now. The actual LCD panel itself is faulty. So let's take a quick look at a typical LCD panel. Now this is actually a faulty one, it's broke. Um, but as you can see, same as the Samsung, we've got two ribbons, we've got two boards, um, and actually on these, there's actually uh, integrated circuits. Now these are called COF, chip on film. Um, and you can see the chip there. Now these aren't, well, I say they're not replaceable, these assemblies are replaceable um, if you've got tens of thousands of pounds of equipment um, but for our purposes these are not replaceable so um, any one of these would give a fault um, so you'd assume because we've got two sides if we unplug one we'd isolate that from the other side so let's just try that in the samsung and see if we can determine whether the fault is on the right or it's on the left. So if one of these chips on here was faulty, uh, either on the right or the left, you would expect by unplugging one and leaving the other still connected, we could determine which side the fault was on. Uh, but in a lot of tellies, that is not the case. So let's have a quick demonstration. I'll leave the left one unplugged and we'll turn the telly on. The right one's still plugged in. Right, so here we go. We'll power up. You can see that's still off. And as you can see, the back lights come on. Will, I mean, right, so this time I've plugged the left in and I've uncoupled the right one. Let's power it up again. And once again, the back lights lit up. So that tends to suggest that, that one of these chips the isn't actually faulty. Yeah. Um, it's a supply to the, the these chips are gate drivers that tends to suggest that a supply to one of these gate drivers is missing I like to you know right so here is where it gets a little bit more technical um, so we can see we've got three inductors there and that tells me that there's three supplies to the screen um, disregard that one that's the incoming um, 12 volt supply incoming inductor to this chip uh, and these three generate the lcd bias voltages um, now these aren't these are just typical voltages they can vary from set to set but we've got uh, vg high 17 vg low which will be minus um, so i've put minus five although these could differ uh, and vcom which is about half the 12 volt supply coming in which is six um, so we've got three different bias supplies there as indicated by the three inductors now two of these voltages are actually present um, but the vg high uh, that trips out as soon as we power the set on so i'll just give you a quick demonstration of that right so i'm using analog meter for speed i'll just get this ready to power up and we'll measure that voltage so as you can see it just pops up and it's tripped out straight away and blend them till I have a paste which looks so now we've established that the fault that actually looked initially like the back lights have failed um, it isn't it's actually the LCD panel itself the screen that's failed um, but before we write the set off let's just make a couple more quick checks so once again I've drawn this little diagram now they're not all like this but this is fairly typical so each cough, um, all these chips, the power supply for these chips are all connected in parallel. 
as you can see now each one of these chips every supply rail will have a local decoupling capacitor to earth on its supply input um, now I've highlighted the one we've got the problem on the VG high and the power goes into the cough and then it's decoupled there to ground then you move over to the next cough and it's the same thing the power in and it's decoupled to ground um, now because the 17 volt rail so that will have a higher decoupling capacitor on that will be probably a 25 volt so the physical size of this will be bigger um, than the ones decoupling the lower voltage rails so let's just move over to the tally and I'll give you the example so if you can see there you've got the big one that's decoupling the 17 volts and then you've got the two smaller ones decoupling the lower rails now we have a fault on the 17 volt rail so it's pretty safe to assume that one of these uh, these bigger ones might actually be faulty um, now the problem arises because these are all in parallel um, we'd have to take every single one off just to look um, if there's a problem so let's first just put an ohm meter across one it doesn't matter which one because they're all in parallel and then I'll show you where we go from there right so one end of these capacitors is actually earthed so we don't need to put the probes across the cap we can just use uh, the earth on the TV as a reference so let's just put onto there And as you can see, we have a virtual short circuit across one of these caps, which are all in parallel. Right, so although we have a short across the 17 volt rail to ground, um, there's two distinct possibilities. It could be the cough IC, or it could be one of the cough ICs, which means the set's going to be scrapped because the new screen's 90% of the cost of the new tally or it could be the local decoupling capacitor. Now these multi-layered ceramic uh, capacitors are very, very unreliable. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test all these first and determine whether it's a capacitor failure, which is repairable, or a cough failure, which would make it a scrapper. Um, now what you could do is you could take all these caps out, which is a big job, or you could just use uh, a milliohm meter um, now for clarity I'm going to be using this one I've, I've made myself um, you can actually buy milliohm meters uh, that's a micro ohm meter and a milliohm meter but they're very very expensive so let's just do the test um, with this homemade one first and um, so I've drawn another diagram here so as you can see um, for just clarity I've only drawn four caps we've got four in parallel so what you do is you take a milliohm reading from there to there and right get the camera so let's supposing uh, for all intents purposes this one is shorted out so supposing you take a reading here and you've got 300 milliohms then you take another reading here um, because of the resistance of the track from that capacitor to that capacitor and that one to that one we, we're not going to have 300 milliohms um, we're going to have a different reading the closer we get to the short the lower the reading um, so supposing we've got 300 milliohms there um, we might only have 200 milliohms there um, and that would indicate as the reading's falling, we're getting closer to the cap that's faulty. Now, when we get to the cap that's faulty, we might only have 100 milliohms. But then we measure the next one across, and because of the resistance of the track there and there, you're going to have a higher reading this side. So, supposing we've got 200 milliohms there. So, that shows you we go 300, 200, 100 then back to 200 that shows us that the cap faulty is this one the one with the lower reading because the bigger readings are on the other side so let's put this to a practical test um, I'm gonna to have to try and set this camera up stand it up somewhere because the um, the tripod just broke 
Right, so hopefully you can see that there. So we start at one end here and we've got a reading. That's 332 milliohms. Now move to the next cap. Now we've got 304. So you can see the readings falling. So as we go along, we're getting closer and closer to which cap is actually faulty. Um, there we have a reading of 248 milliohms. So I'll move to the next one. And a reading of 213 milliohms. So if I lift the camera up, as you can see, I started here and I move across, and because of the distance, the copper track between these two caps, um, that's the resistance we're measuring. So we started off at 300, and as we go down here, the resistance is going lower and lower and lower, and eventually we'll come to the point where we get a reading. And then the next cap across will have a higher reading. And that will indicate um, where the short is. Either this cap or this cough will be faulty. Right, so I've started here with a milliohm meter. Um, I've moved across and I get right down here. And I find that the reading here is at the lowest point. And then when I move to these, the reading starts to rise again. So that indicates either that cap... Oh, this cough is faulty um, now I've actually removed the cap there you can see where I've removed it and it turns out that that multi-layered ceramic uh, capacitor 10 microfarad is actually dead short and uh, that there is the offending part so as you can see what turned out to look like failure of the backlights um, was actually this little capacitor. Now, they are only local decoupling capacitors on the supply line to the uh, cough chips. We can just power the setup without this in, uh, and it should come on. In fact, it does come on because I've found this fault already, like I explained in the video, and I put the old cap back in. Um, so let's just power it up, and then uh, we'll replace the cap with a new one. Now this is where it gets difficult trying to hold the camera, plug it in and hold the tally up at the same time. So here we go. That's powered up. Down here, it's sparked a new there idea. you go. That's the TV working. So all we need to do now is we need to um, look for a capacitor. And what I want to do over there is I'm thinking about some nut trees great for the wildlife be good for us because we can then reap the benefit from and the nut um, trees as well. change the one there I've that's got missing idea of where i want to put them but i need a bit of help right and there we go um you can see that's the new cap in there it actually looks uh, a bit different to the other one but um these are actually 10 microfarad uh, at 25 volt In fact, its number is it? Is it C A one 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 three there? Yeah, C A one one three. So there you go, guys, guys and girls. Fault finding without a service manual, not easy, but not always impossible. And then the customer will say, "What was it?" And you give them that back, and they say. Oh, is that all it was? Alright guys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.